What up everybody? My name is Alana Trepler and this is the ATD Show. From the studio today, virtually, I am joined by Felice Tovar, Interim Director for the St. Louis Region Care to Learn. Felice, welcome to the studio. Hi, thanks hey. for having me. <laughs> right on. So thank you so much for joining us for the show today. And uh, just tell us a little bit about Care to Learn. Yeah, so Care to Learn is an organization that was founded um, by Doug Pitt down in Springfield, Missouri. And it has expanded into the St. Louis region in the last six years to help school districts with um, fill the gap need for health, hunger, and hygiene. So we partner with the school district. We help them raise funds. We take those funds and they go to the kids who um, may need to see a doctor and their parents don't have health insurance. Um, they may need just personal hygiene needs. Their parents are struggling to um, provide food on the table. So of course, other things go aside. So we provide that. Uh, if the kids need to um, have food over the weekend, we help provide the food so they have backpacks. It's just, we just help, no questions asked. If the child is in need, we meet the need. Awesome. So um, it's really awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, so I was looking at your website and it looks like you guys service a lot of kiddos. Um, can you tell me about the, the students that you're helping and, and the school districts? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in Southwest Missouri, where it started, there are 30 school districts uh, in Southwest Missouri in the Springfield area, and they have been serving them over the last uh, 12 years. And then in the St. Louis, to focus on that, uh, we have Warrington, Wright City, um, St. Charles, Hazelwood, and Bayless. Uh, those are the school districts we're working with currently, and we're looking to expand more in the county. And um, basically, uh, just to share some stories, to share some examples, um, one student, he needed to uh, have an interview, and the school had lined up these interviews for a, a special uh, course that he was taking to go towards college credit, and it was really important for his future but he kept missing the interviews. He kept not showing up. And finally, one of the teachers said, what's going on? And the student is like, look at my mouth. And his teeth were all um, just not very pretty. Uh, and he was scared to smile during an interview because he was very conscious about how his teeth looked. So um, we stepped in, we got him the dental work, he got his interview, he made it to college and he graduated. So. Um, it, it's stories like those. Uh, we make a huge impact. Um, it's it's really the small things, and that's where Care to Learn comes in. Wow. So okay, so that's that's a really interesting story because, you know, some of the the nonprofits that we've been working with, we hear you know kiddos who are hungry or who need clothing and the, and those sorts of things. But I haven't worked with an organization yet that actually provides medical care, such as dental. Um, and so you guys also provide uh, doctor's visits and things like that, too. Yeah, <clears throat> we provide the funding for that. We, okay. we pay the bill. Um, we I know in St. I can't speak for Springfield, um, but I know in St. Louis, we've actually uh, partnered with a doctor who would be willing to take up to 150 students over the course of the year. Wow. If they need it, if they need to see a pediatrician. So um, we're we're coming along in the region. And so not just uh, providing the funding, but providing partnerships so that we can offset costs. Wow, that's incredible. Now, I saw a stat on your on the website that 22% of the students in the greater St. Louis region, St. Charles, um, and the other ones that you mentioned, um, that 22% of the students are in need of the Care to Learn services. Yes, yes, that's correct. Um, basically, when we look to find a school that we seek to partner with and help, we look at uh, their uh, their statistics as far as um, 
uh, free and reduced lunches to kind of get a gauge. Um, and that when you look at the numbers in some of these school districts, it's hard to imagine how those students are surviving. Um, for, for example, there's one school district, uh, it has approximately 90% of their students are on free and reduced lunch. Wow. Because the poverty level. So we're talking like North St. Louis. If you look at uh, municipal uh, poverty, it's it's quite shocking to see how many people in, in a modern day and age uh, are struggling to, to pay their bills and take care of their kids. So it, it's, and, and it's not just necessarily a, a situation the parents can control. It's just, it's kind of the way things are and they have to survive. So we help, help, you know, make sure that the kids are taken care of. They're our future. Yeah, absolutely. So. Okay, so now is that just, a, is that a general statistic or how has this COVID-19 quarantine, everything shut down, uh, stay at home order, how has that affected your families? So that has really stressed our families. Um, I'm getting reports that some of our families are struggling to pay their rent because they're not essential workers and they're on, you know, they're off work and they're in a situation where they're not getting a check. And so we are looking to try real hard to figure out how we can help with that situation and make those payments. Uh, that is an extreme case. It's not something we typical, typically do, but we want to make sure that we're taking care of these families. So we're taking extreme measures during this time that we know don't necessarily, um, we're, we're usually not challenged with these things. So it, it's, um, but we're ready to step up and help out. Um, we're, uh, we, we have an emergency fund on top of what the schools are bringing in. So uh, we're, we're going into that and making sure that these kids are all taken care of. So That's great. Yeah, That's... I mean, the rent is one example. Uh, also, feeding the kids is another example. Schools are challenged. Um, I know a lot of school districts, they, they took the federal funding and, and continued to provide lunch and breakfast and, and set up programs. But even as I talk to the schools, they're getting stressed on the um, – food needs. So um, one thing that we did, which again was another extraordinary thing, and we don't typically do it because our model is partnering with the school district. We did see an opportunity to help um, two other school districts last week um, uh, in the Pattonville and Rittner school district. And I had already been talking with Rittner anyway. So what we did we found out that their uh, backpack program was no longer in place, so we knew they needed something in Rittner. Yeah. Uh, we stepped up, we, we, we purchased $15,000 of food from the St. Louis Food Bank, and half a truckload, or no, I'm sorry, one entire truckload went to the Rittner Food Pantry. Another truckload went to Spirit Church, where we distributed it to 220 households. 472 children were taken care of. Oh my God. That's and incredible. it was, it was amazing. So again, an extraordinary thing. It's something we don't typically do, but we felt we had to step up at this time and help out because we, uh, we have a caring and loving board here in St. Louis and they said we need to do something. So they raised the funds to do that on their own. Um, so we could do that for those kids. Um, we're, we're, we're blessed, but we, we need help. Um, I mean, we're going to need help to keep up with these ex extra expenses we're not um, used to having. Sure. So. Okay. Um, all right. So what is your biggest need right now? You said you need help. So what can we do? <laughs> and honestly, the hard part about this question is is the way we are structured, we, we just need to continue to have uh, generous donations come in. Um, or if, if there's anybody out there who has a company that has matching funds, now would be a great time to use those matching funds from your business and, and help contribute to care to learn and we'll help you with that process, get the documentation. But the way we're structured, we have partnerships with other organizations to get low cost for all the things that we need for the students. So we take the dollars, we make the purchases from those partnerships 
um, so we can stretch the dollars and maximize how we're impacting. If you think about it, last week we dropped $15,000 and that provided 16,000 meals wow. out of that. So that's less than a dollar a meal. So it's pretty incredible when you consider what we can do with our partnerships to make these purchases to take care of these kids. So really what we're doing is looking for more donations financially um, because it's just a lot easier to, when we have something happen, we can um, take care of the problem right then and there and we don't have to have a huge warehouse of food and storage. Um, right. Unless the school has a um, food pantry already in place, so. Wow, okay, so you're, so that's, like you said, less than a dollar a meal so every yeah, dollar I mean, that, could be a meal for a, a child or a family yep purchase yeah. done right that that that's yeah it was incredible um working with the st louis food bank was awesome so yeah. they were a great resource and yes, can't wait to are. work with them again yes yes yeah we did an so. interview with uh, meredith um, a, a few weeks ago and and yeah they are an incredible organization um, okay so so we got the food covered what about any hygiene products or clothing any of those any other things that we can do you know maybe somebody can't donate money but maybe they have a closet full of clothes that don't fit their kids How, would that be something that you're looking for off the top of my head I, I unfortunately I, I'd say no at this okay. time. Um, I did <clears throat> since I did mention the school districts we're working with. If anybody is aware of um, has a connection with their school district or has kids in their school and thought, "Hey, I'm stuck in quarantine. I've been cleaning out the house. I've got all the spare clothes." Call the school and find out if they have any needs. Um, that's the best recommendation I can get um, with that. Uh, okay. Like I said, we're just not structured to kind of take in and then hand out. Um, it, it just takes up a lot of room. Okay. So that's good advice, it, though. Yeah, we're we're yeah. trying to maximize again. Essentially, we're just trying to maximize our donations and how we're um, using them. And uh, it just seems like a, a better use to use our partners and, and get those resources as needed instead of having a stockpile. Um, so because okay. typically we're not locked in our houses and, and in quarantine, so. Right, right, yeah. Okay, Yeah. all right, well, um, okay, so your immediate need right now is just funding for food. Yep, and, and uh, just the donations will go across the board, uh, of course. Um, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll meet the need head on when the need comes in. Uh, right now we're just seeing a lot of need financially. Again, like I said, um, an unprecedented time, we uh, were going to try to help with some rent. Uh, unprecedented time, you know, we'll talk if the kids need personal hygiene needs, we'll, we'll step in for that. So it's, it's a case by case situation. That, that's why um, the financial support is what we strive to, to get. Yeah, awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for what you're doing for our community. We'll get this awareness out there and, um, you know, hopefully we'll get some people involved to, to help out with feeding our kids and, and bringing health and to our community. Yeah. Thank you so much okay. for having me and thank you for spreading the word out. I really appreciate having you to do this. It's, it's right. been great. Um, uh, I hope you have a wonderful week. Oh. Thank you. Let me ask you a quick question. Do you have yeah. a message for the people who are helping and the people who could potentially help? To the people who are helping, thank you so much for really at this point, you, you're, you're putting your health in the line to help others. But I hope you're also taking the proper precautions like we did with masks and gloves and social distancing as much as you can. Um, the thing that this uh, situation has done for me is realized that um, I'm so appreciative of a wonderful community that we have in St. Louis that steps up and helps in time of need and, and continue to do that. And it, if, if you watch what's going on around us, it, it really doesn't take much to help. So uh, every little bit counts. And for those who are considering it, it um, 
one day out of this whole mess can just do so much for so many people. So consider doing it um, if you have the resources or if the organization is providing the resources to protect yourself. Of course, do it safe, but um, again, just a, a little bit of time, a half a day. Um, a mutual friend of ours took half a day out of his work schedule to help and it made a huge difference. So keep up the good work and um, keep safe and healthy. Awesome. Belize, thank you so much for being on the show today and uh, for everything that you're doing to help the kiddos in our community. We appreciate you. Thank you again. It's, it's an honor to do this job. It really is. For Felice Tovar with the Care to Learn St. Louis region, my name is Alana Trepler. Ta-ta for now, everybody. Mm -hmm.